this chapter, we're going to start looking at applications of derivatives. In this lesson, we're going to look at motion problems that require implicit differentiation. All right, hi everybody. So now we're going to take a look at, at acceleration and velocity questions again, but this time with a little twist on it. Okay, so remember that velocity is the derivative of displacement. And acceleration is the derivative of velocity, which means it's the second derivative of displacement. With respect to time, okay, in every case here, it's always with respect to time. Time is the independent variable. Now, that's, that's a really important thing to, to kind of pause and, and kind of digest here. Time is the independent variable. And I'll show you why. We're just going to go through and jump in and do, do examples here. So the first example we see given that 10v squared is equal to 64s plus 1,000, we're being asked to find an expression for acceleration. So I need to take a derivative to get the acceleration to pop out of this. But the thing is, notice that there's no t here. You are not seeing the independent variable at all in this expression. Now, velocity is a function of time. Displacement is a function of time. Time is there. It's just not there explicitly. And, and if you could have seen my face, that would have been one of those times where I kind of leaned in, eyebrows up, huh, huh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You don't see the T there explicitly. It's because you're going to have to take the derivative implicitly. And yeah, I can hear people groaning, but that's what you got to do here. So, for example, to take the derivative of the left-hand side here, 10V squared, I recognize that V is a function of time. So when I take the derivative, first of all, I've got to take the derivative of the, the fact, the function squared here. So bring down the 2, so it's going to be 20, okay, 2 times 10, v to the power of 1, and then I'm going to move in and take the derivative of the velocity function. Well, I don't know what that is, but I do know, okay, that I have to include the derivative of whatever that is. Now I'm going to deal with this in just a second here, but Watch the, the implicit derivative here. Bring down the 2, 20 times v multiplied by the derivative of v. On the right-hand side, I'm going to take the derivative of 64s. Now, s stands for displacement here, right? So this is like 64s to the 1. So bring down the 1. 1 times 64, 64. s to the 0 is 1. It's going to go away. But I have to multiply by the derivative of displacement. Because remember, s is not the independent variable here. t is. So s is some function of t, so I need to include the derivative of, of s there. Now, the derivative of 1,000, 0. It's going to go away. Now, every time we get to this part in the, the course here, people start to forget that rule, that the derivative of a constant is 0. So please be on the, the lookout for questions like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this, replacing what I know these derivatives are equal to. So 20vA... 64, and then s primed is v. Oh, okay. Well, notice in both cases here that there's a, a common v on both sides. So I can, I can cancel those. I can divide that. And then what I'll do here is I will bring the, the 20 over. And so I'll get acceleration is equal to 64 over 20. And then all I really got to do is simplify that fraction a little bit here. Uh, and it looks like both numerator and denominator here are divisible by, by 4. So it's going to get me 16 fifths. And that's the, the expression or the answer that I'm looking for here. Now, they don't always work out to be these nice numeric values here. Okay, and we'll take a look at some examples where that's definitely not true. But that's just to give you a sense of how this works. Okay, now I'm going to do a couple more examples here in a row, and they're, they're going to be very similar examples because the point that we're going to be making here, it kind of needs to be made at least twice. Like, you, you really need to see this happen a couple of times for it to, to sink in. Basically the same question. Okay, basically the same question. It's just that in this case here, uh, this is what we give you for velocity, and I'm going to ask you once again for an expression for acceleration. So when I take the derivative of this, the derivative of v, v primed. Because again, there's no t here, so you're not explicitly seeing the t, so you have to take the derivative implicitly. On the right-hand side, that 4s over 2 plus s squared, okay, that's going to require the, the quotient rule. 
So the derivative of the numerator, the derivative of 4s would be 4 multiplied by the derivative of s, so s primed, because I don't, I don't know what the derivative of the displacement is supposed to be, so I use that symbol right there, s primed, to replace it in the equation. Multiplied by the denominator, minus the numerator, multiplied by the derivative of the denominator, which in this case is going to be, now that is supposed to be s squared there. I know they're running together there, but it is s squared. So this will be 2s, s primed. Okay, so the, again, taking the place of the derivative of s here. Now your denominator is going to be 2 plus s squared. Now, frequently when people do this, okay, let me zoom in a little bit here. Frequently when people do a question like this, what they will forget is the, the s primes there. They will forget to include that, okay? So please watch out for that. But that's not the only issue that we have to address here. Because now it would be a very normal thing for us to want to rewrite the primes in terms of what I know that they're, the expression that I know that they're equivalent to. But I want to point out here that, that I've got a derivative here and it's equal to other derivatives and I don't actually like that. Okay? I don't actually like this. Now, another thing that I could have done, I could have written here, and I'll, I'll do this right now really quickly. V primed is equal to S double primed. When I take a second derivative, I don't usually like to write it in terms of first derivatives. So, I actually want to get rid of those S primes. I'll show you that in just a second here. For right now, we're going to rewrite. It's supposed to. Be, this was supposed to be v primed, but I know that v primed is a acceleration. Oh, sorry. You know what? I'm going to just rewrite this expression. I keep erasing it here, but I'm going to rewrite that. So v primed is equal to this. So that means acceleration is going to equal 4v2 plus s squared minus 4s2sv all over 2 plus s squared. Okay, so acceleration is going to equal, now I'm just going to simplify this really, 8v plus 4vs squared uh, minus what do we got here, 8s squared v. Whoops, sorry, that should have been squared. Oh wow, I, can, I forgot those in both those terms here. There are going to be a whole bunch of you out there responding to that. I'm going to leave comments, but I caught it. I caught it before it hit YouTube, so should be a square there. So then this is over 2 plus s squared squared. Okay, so when I simplify that, 8v minus 4s squared v all over 2 plus s squared all squared. Okay, and that's, that's fine, but I am now writing a derivative in terms of another derivative. This is the second derivative of displacement and I'm writing it in terms of the first derivative of displacement. If I can avoid that, I really, really should. So what I'm going to suggest we do here is I'm going to factor that numerator a little bit here. Just to simplify this, I'm going to pull out a 4v. And that's going to leave me with 2 minus s squared all over 2 plus s squared squared. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of v. And I do that because I know what v is equal to. This is what v is equal to. So I'm going to replace that with 4s over 2 plus s squared. So my acceleration, I'm going to do it over here. My acceleration is going to become 4 times 4s over 2 plus s squared multiplied by 2 minus s squared over 2 plus s squared, squared. Hey, a lot going on there. But this is now going to become 16s multiplied by 2 minus s squared. But in the denominator, notice I've got 2 plus s squared multiplied by 2 plus s squared, squared. So there's actually three identical factors down there. So my acceleration is going to be 16 s multiplied by 2 minus s squared over 2 plus s squared cubed. Okay, now let's take a look at another example that's very, very similar to this. 
just really just so that you've had another one to look at here. So given that velocity is equal to 5,000 s over 5 plus s, we're going to find, an, and again, a value for, or an expression for acceleration. Once again, we just take the first derivative of, of both sides. Now, bear in mind that, and actually, you know, I'm going to write it like this. Uh, maybe this will help clarify uh, if there's confusion here. This little switch here might help clarify this. I'm going to write v as s primed. So that's all I've done. I've just rewritten that first expression, but I've write, written a derivative there instead of the v. Now, I am going to take a derivative of, of both sides. Now, there is already a derivative here. So I want you to think about this. When I say I'm, I'm going to take the derivative, I don't, it doesn't have to be, like there is nothing that is the second derivative. There is no operation that is the fifth derivative. You are simply taking a derivative multiple times. I am going to now just take the derivative of this expression, this whole expression, once. But on the left-hand side, that is a derivative. So when I do it again, when I take the derivative, that's going to be the second derivative of displacement. Now, the right-hand side is a rational expression, so it's going to require the quotient rule. So the derivative of the numerator will become 5,000 s primed. Okay, can I take the, the derivative of the displacement, again, implicitly, multiplied by 5 plus s minus the numerator, 5,000 s, and when you t multiply by the derivative of the denominator, well, the derivative of the denominator, the only part that really requires a derivative is, is just the s there, and the derivative of s is s primed. And this will all be over 5 plus s squared. Now, remember to square this time. Now, let's rewrite this in terms of, the, of what we know those pieces are, are representing. And again, just to state this, I don't like the fact that my second derivative is in terms of the first derivative. I'm going to deal with that in just a moment. So this is going to end up being acceleration is equal to uh, 5,000 V, 5 plus S minus 5,000 S V all over 5 plus S squared. Let's multiply that out. Uh, that is going to become 25,000 V plus 5,000 V S. Oh, this is wonderful. Minus 5,000 V S all over 5 plus S squared. Okay. Well, I can see that those cancel. That's wonderful. And I'm left with 25,000 V all over 5 plus S squared. But remember that this is acceleration, the second derivative of displacement, with respect to velocity, the first derivative of displacement. And I don't like that. If I can avoid it, I want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that v and I'm going to replace it with the expression that I know that it's equal to because of the question. 5,000 s over 5 plus s. So that's going to be 5,000 s over 5 plus s. Now, normally I would keep going down here, but I've run out of room here. Oh, boy, look at that. I have got 25,000 multiplied by 5,000. That is going to be an, a, a huge 125 million times s all over, and notice the denominator in both cases, the denominator's got the same factor in it, so altogether there's going to be three of those factors down there. So 125 million times the displacement over 5 plus the displacement, and that's all cubed. All right, one, one more question, and then we're, we're kind of done looking at this concept here. And I like this one. The total energy H of a particle of mass m that is moved through a distance or displacement here s has attained a velocity v, that's given by this right here. Now, you should recognize that. Okay, one-half mv squared, that's going to be kinetic energy. Um, mfs, well, we're saying where f is a constant. Okay, now, that could be interpreted in a couple of different ways, uh, but 
this is your potential energy, okay, as a, as a function really of displacement. Now, in most cases, when we're looking at a question like this, uh, if I ask what does what usually goes in the place of F, there will be a whole bunch of you that will, that will recognize this. It's G, okay? It's the acceleration, it's the, uh, sorry, the um, acceleration due to gravity. Well, we're gonna just take a quick look at, at this in kind of a, a general sense. If the total energy is a constant, and that makes sense, okay, in a system here, we got a particle moving through it. Usually, yeah, the energy makes uh, stays constant because kinetic energy switches with potential energy there. We're going to show that the acceleration is equal to negative F. All right, well, let's take the derivative, right? Because there is no acceleration here, but I know that the derivative of velocity is acceleration. And again, notice that time isn't the written explicitly here. This function is not explicitly in terms of, of time, even though it is implicitly because V and S are both functions of time. So the derivative of h, it's a constant, it's going to be zero. m is a constant. Now, m isn't always constant, but in this particular case here, I think we are safe to assume that it is. But the velocity is a function of, of time here. So when I take the derivative of that, that will be 1 half m 2v, and then multiplied by v prime because we know velocity is a function of time plus, we know m is a constant, we know f is a constant, the derivative of s, sorry, of s will be s primed. We, we know that it's a function of time, I don't know what the derivative is, so I use that symbol to represent the derivative just like I did over here. Okay, now let's rewrite, whoops, sorry, I, there's an obvious bit of simplifying here and I just skipped over it, one half times two, Okay, they're going to cancel, so we're left with m, v, and v primed is a, plus m, f, and s primed is v. All right, now I can factor out the m and the v. So I've got m, v multiplied by a minus f. Now, this product is supposed to be equal to zero, but m isn't zero. Okay. The velocity, I mean, I suppose the velocity could be zero, but it has attained some sort of velocity. It's moved through this thing, this, this distance here. Uh, it's not likely zero. So really what we're looking at here is a minus f must be equal. Well, why did I put minus? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm anticipating the answer. Shoot. That's a plus f. So a plus f is equal to zero. Ah, I hate when I do that. Okay. A plus f equals zero, which means a must be equal to negative f. That's, that's the result that we were, were looking for there. Okay. Well, I hope this gives you an idea of how to answer those kinds of questions when they, when they pop up.